Hey guys, I'm Scott Schneider. This is Stereo Niche. Hey, this week we're going to take a look at all of the speakers I've reviewed thus far. So stick around and see which ones rank the highest. Right. Well, let's talk about how I review speakers before we jump into the ratings and show what, what did everything stack up. So my very first review was for this set of new large advents, and this particular set was made from around 78 to 82. And so this was my first review. And I started with this because this speaker has become my baseline. And so I chose the Advent because it was such a successful speaker of the 1970s. And it was, it was successful because it was a great sounding sort of, you know, low to mid-range cost speaker. And they, and they sold a ton of them. And they're still out there. They're still available. If you'd like to find a set, you know, you can probably find a set fairly local to you at not too much of an expense. And that will give you an understanding of what, you know, I'm hearing as far as my baseline. And so, after I did this one, every other speaker that I reviewed was compared against the Advent. So when I'm doing a review, I break it down into five sections and I give 20 points for each section. So the first section is style and how its, foot, its footprint or its form factor, how does it accommodate into a room or how easy or how hard is it? And so I give up to 20 points for, for those areas. Following that, it falls into the sound. The, the initial section is the uh, sound stage uh, and the imaging. And so I do a listening session um, against both speakers doing A and B sessions, and then evaluate how good do they rep how, how well are they in those areas compared to the advent. Following that, it's a breakdown of the lows, the mids, and the highs. And again, I give 20 points for each section. So, now I'm going to give you an overview of how each of the other nine speakers that were compared to the Advent, how do they stack up, and I'm going to do it in the order that I reviewed them. And then at the end, I'll break it out a little further and show you how did each of those speakers rank when you separate from the, the style uh, valuation, and then give you an idea of how they rank there. So let's get to it. All right, so let's kick it off with the first review, and that was the New Large Advent. So just in quick, some quick notes here, the New Large Advent was a, a, created and manufactured around 78 to 82, and it's a two-way speaker. The only two-way that I actually rated and reviewed uh, for this you know, group of speakers I've done so far. It's an 8-ohm speaker, and it has an 89 decibel sensitivity. So starting off with the style, and I'll just looking at some of the notes that I took here, um, I felt like it had a crisp, clean style, even though it could look, you know, a little bit dated with this curved, you know, what we call the bullnose front, you know, on this particular model. Um, but I still felt like it, it has still a fairly good look to it. On the other side, as far as size, it's a rather large bookshelf. And I say bookshelf because back when these were made, this was what was called a bookshelf. Not by today's standards, of course, but we consider bookshelves to be much smaller now. But back when these were produced, that's what they were called. Uh, so because it was still a little bit large and you know, not as easily accommodated in most spaces, between the look and the size, I ended up giving it a style rating of 13. So moving on into imaging, this is um, a bit of an adjustment here. So the Advent has it's a very good Im imaging. It's, it's, a, it's a, a speaker that has a great sound quality, but the sound stage itself is very narrow and then it's dead center. So, but it does have a pretty good size sweet spot. So it, it's pleasant. You can, you can pull out the instruments, you know, they're, they're still very distinguishable. Um, but the one thing that I realized uh, after I initially gave them a 15 was that the sound stage is just so narrow compared to all the other speakers I started rating. I realized I really didn't, that the 15 wasn't justifiable. So I ended up changing that and changing the imaging uh, rating to a 13. So that's where they came in at a 13 and that's where they'll stay going forward. 
Now moving on into the base, the low end. So it has a sealed enclosure and it produces a very nice type base. And if you're a Henry Klaus fan, then I think you'll, you'll appreciate this. The sealed enclosure was, you know, sort of his baby and uh, it, it's well, well done. It's well executed in the advent. It has a large enough cabinet that for me produces a really good base that I just don't need to be augmented for me anyway with a subwoofer. So I very much like it. And for that, I gave it a 14. Moving on to the mids. Now, the mid notes. Now, I'll remind everyone again, it's a two-way, so there's not a dedicated mid-range. But it sounds so good. The mid-range notes on the Advent, you don't miss it. You don't miss not having a mid-range. I don't notice it whatsoever. And voices and, and artists sound right in front of you. The, 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 the sound uh, of their voicing is very good. So. To me, it's, 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 a great, it's probably one of the best two ways ever. And so for that, I ended up giving it a 14, uh, I'm sorry, a 16 uh, overall in the mid notes. Moving into the highs. Now, if you're not familiar with Advent, it has what we call, uh, it's sort of nicknamed the of their tweeter. It's called the fried egg tweeter. And, you know, if you're, if you, once you see this, it looks, if you, you know, that orange tweeter looks kind of like a fried egg. So it seems pretty natural. But it's a, it doesn't look pretty, but it's a great sounding tweeter. It's nice and crisp, but not at all fatiguing. And it's just a pleasant tweeter to listen to. And for that, I ended up giving it a 16 as well. So in total, it scored a 72. So the 72 became my baseline measurement. And so all speakers going forward are gonna be rated against the advent at a 72. So let's check out the next ones and see how they came in. All right, well, let's start off with that first review that I did after the advent, the Klipsch Heresy. So right off the bat, looking at style, I gave them a 14 because I thought while, the, you know, the, they looked a little bit more contemporary than the advent, a little more compact, a little easier to move around. On the imaging side of things, there was a separation of instruments, but you know, not as much as the advent and things were more blended together, not quite as separate. So that was a little bit surprising for me being that it was a three-way. On the bass side of things, a little less pronounced. It could have been a factor of how I had them set up, but overall I gave them a 13. On the mids, voices to me, they sounded less distinguished than uh, the, the advent. So for that, I gave them a 14. On to the highs. For me, it was just a little bit less appealing than the old fried egg tweeter of the advent. Um, I, you know, just couldn't fall in love with that horn tweeter really, but it was still, you know, a little fatiguing, I thought. So for that, I gave it a 14. Overall, it was a good performer, but um, I gave it a total of 68 points compared to the advent. Now moving on to the next review that I did, that was the Polk SDA. Boy, this was a really fun one. Starting off with, um, you know, the look, it didn't start off with a big bang. Uh, this was pretty boring. It's very bland. Uh, for that reason, it gets an 11. On the imaging side, this is where it just took off. Separation of instruments was incredible, had a big, big sound stage. And for that, it got an 18. Moving on in the low end of things, was deep and pronounced um, everywhere, really. It didn't, uh, wasn't really directional, so it was, it was really pretty cool. Got a 16 on that for the bass and the low end. On the mids, it was everywhere. Big room filling sound from the mids, 18 points. The highs were crisp and bigger, more delicate than the advent, got a 17. All that added up to a total of eight, um, 80 points. Now on the Pioneer TZ9. So it's a big speaker, but it has a coolness to it that I just couldn't pass up. And this is one of those where you just want to leave the grills off. So for that, I ended up giving it an, uh, an, a, um, <clears throat> a score of 14, oh, I'm sorry, 16 
for that. Even though it uh, was a big speaker, I, I still thought the coolness was a 16. On the imaging side, it's huge. The, the sound stage you get from these is enormous. It gets an 18 for that. On the bass side of things, much deeper, much more powerful than the Advent, 17 points. On the mids, that mid-range is silky smooth, uh, and it highlights um, the music, the voices. And so, you know, it's also paired with the imaging. So for that, it got 17 points. On the high side, clear and a lot more tone, 18 points. All totaled out here, we have 86 points. Next, we did the um, Yamaha NS1000. On the style side of things, another one here that really, I think most people prefer to run grillless. So for that, it got 14 points. Imaging, it was a little less soundstage uh, than the Advent, and, but, but it was a little more lively. So I ended up giving it 15 points. On the bass side of things, it was more controlled um, but not in a dramatic way, so it got 15 points. On the mids, it was very good. Uh, singers were out front and center, 17 points. On the highs, crisp, 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 but not fatiguing, and for that it got 16 points. So all put together, the Yamaha got 77 points. Next was the JBL 4411. So on style, it has sharper lines or you know more angular but very crisp lines for that. And for that, I gave the style and the ability to sort of move them vertically or horizontally. Gave it 15 points. On the imaging side, it imaged very well, um, but you couldn't get them further apart than nine feet. They are monitors after all. Had 16 points for that. On the low end. Uh, I did expect uh, a little bit more because they were ported, but they did very well and they got a 14. On the mids, great mid-range. It was very, very good. 18 points. On the high side, nice and clean. It was lively. 17 points. And that totaled out at 80 points. Now on to the Frasier Concerto. So these are a boxy unit, and, but they're deceivingly heavily, heavy. Um, but this is one where you definitely want to have or make some grills. It, originally they had a foam grill that would disintegrate, so you need to make grills. You do that, uh, then it's you know respectably looking. And, but for style, I gave it 13 points. On the imaging side, it was a little wider, had a little more separation than the Advent, so I gave them 16 points. On the low end, a little less, than the Advent, so it got 13 points there. On the mid-range, voicing was great. It was centered in front, and for that it got 16 points. And on the highs, and it has this piezo tweeter, but it was well balanced and it got 16 points for that. All total, 74 points for the Frasier. Now on to the JBL L100T3. Now, this is um, the upgrade from the, the regular T model, so, but it looks the same. So on the style side of things, I thought it had a more modern look, although it is much bigger, uh, a little less accommodating, but overall it got 14 style points. On the imaging, big and deeper soundstage, and it's a much taller soundstage, so it got 17 points there. On the bass side of things, much deeper, much more full, 15 points. On the mid notes, mid range, it's lively, it was uh, nice voicing, but you know, not quite out as, as much in front. But for that, it got 16 points. And on the high side, I found it slightly too bright for my ears. Uh, some other people might like them very much, but I gave it 15 points. And that totaled out at 77 points. Now on to the big clipch horns. So on the clips horns, obviously they're imposing, they're huge, they have, a, have to be set up a certain specific way in a room that needs to be accommodating. So that really hit them hard on the style side of things. They only got 10 points there. 
But on the, on the sound side of things, on the imaging, it has this effortless and huge soundstage. It's, it, has, it provides a concert type realism, really. I mean, you can't, it's, it's, it's an experience. And on the imaging side, I gave it 16 points. On bass, I didn't have them properly set up, but it was still pretty good. Um, I, I expect I will give it more points if I can ever get them properly set up. But for, the, for what they were, I gave them 15 points. On the mid-range, very real in-person type voicing came from it. It was very exciting, 17 points there. And then on the high side, uh, extremely pleasant. Now this particular set I have has some Kreitz, uh, a Kreitz tweeter. So for that, it got 17 points. And in total, 75 points for the Clipshorn. Now on to the Vienna Acoustics Beethoven Baby Grand. Probably the, uh, gets the, the record for the longest name in total, but uh, so in looking at style, obviously more modern, has a refined, very nice finish to it and a smaller footprint overall. Got 15 points. On the imaging, it was wider and had some better placement of instrumentation. So for that, it got 15 points. On the bass side of things, nice and solid, wasn't boomy, but it wasn't much bigger than the Advent, so for that it got 14 points. On the mid notes, smooth and controlled, I think the voices were very pronounced, but occasionally they were a little bit more muddled, so it was back and forth with that, so I did give it a 16 though. On to the highs, it was, as they say, a silky tweeter provided some silky tones, and it was very, very nice sounding, no harshness whatsoever. 17 points, uh, which for total points ended up being 77 total. All right, so this is a view of how did things stack up from highest to lowest. So obviously the first one there is the new large advent. That's the baseline with 72 points. So after that, the highest score that uh, came out of any of the reviews is the Pioneer TZ9. That was the highest pointed review that I did. Coming in for tied for second is the Polk SDA2 and the JBL 4411, both with 80 points. And then we have a bit of a, a traffic jam here in third place, tied for third, you know, the Yamaha, the JBL, and the Vienna Acoustics models here. Um, but they all, you know, do sound different, but they scored, you know, differently in different areas. But and nonetheless, they all came out with the same score of 77, followed by the Clipshorn and then the Concerto and then the Klipsch Heresy is at the bottom end here. But this includes the style component. How do they rate it on the style, which is, you know, obviously all of this is subjective, but probably nothing is more subjective than the style rating. So. How do they look? How, does it, how do they rank up here if we just talk about the sound qualities? So when we look at, at that, the Pioneer still comes in first. However, it's only one point away from the Polk SDA. So those two, although I can tell you the sound signatures are different, they're extremely fun. I enjoyed both of them tremendously. So if you want to consider the, 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 the style a little heavier, then Pioneer is the way to go. If you want to just talk about sound only with a lower cost, one lower entry point uh, on the cost side of things, the Polk SDA will, will really get your juices flowing, if you will. It's a very exciting speaker. All of these I enjoyed, but you know, this is just a way for me to show you how much do they differ from that baseline of the Advent. So moving into third here, the, the JBL and the Clipshorn. So the Clipshorn obviously moved up quite a bit. If you take away that penalty of its size and its requirement and need for a special room and just talk about sound, it moved up the chain, you know, in this list pretty well here and tied for third. So then you can see how the rest of these, you know, came out. But the, um, you know, interesting thing here, I think, is uh, a, a good way for me to show you how do I hear these things differently compared to the Advent and give you some sort of reference and scoring system to give you an idea of you know, where do they stack up against each other. I, would, I don't have enough hours in a day to compare all of these to each other. So I had to find a way that I could take a baseline, give you an idea of how it compares, and then give you a ranking. So I will continue to do this going forward and I'll you know, do a whole nother series of speakers and you'll see those reviews week over week and then I'll come back and do a summary here and we'll see if 
anyone can, you know, beat the Pioneer TZ9 and the Polk STA. All right, well, there you have it. That's the current summary and how things stack up against each other. Um, I'm going to now start moving out this set of speakers and I'll start rotating in some more. I've had a lot of requests for ADS recently. I do have quite a few ADS, so I'll start rotating those in here and doing some reviews and then let you know how they stack up against the advents. Um, I also have gotten quite a few requests for some Dynacos. Uh, I don't have any Dynacos yet, so as soon as I get a set, I, I'd love to have a pair, some, you know, some A25s or some 35s would be great, but uh, I don't have any to review. But as soon as I can get a pair, I'll certainly get them in here. I, I also would like to hear how they sound against the Advents too, so speaker I'm keeping my eye out for. Um, after that, I, so after the ADS, um, I actually I need to also uh, do the uh, IMFs here. They're on a, a pretty amazing speaker. So those are, will be coming up fairly soon as well. Uh, so I hope you appreciate that. And uh, if you want to keep up, don't want to miss out, hit subscribe. Want to get notified, hit that bell. And as always, thank you guys for tuning in.